words cannot describe how grateful and happy I am right now. This is something that I wanted for the past few months. A primo return. And I'm glad to say that... I'm glad to say that WWE finally listened. <laughs> the God is back. The legend. The future Hall of Famer. It's not the kind of return that I expected, but it's the one that I definitely deserve. People, I don't even care about the Royal Rumble anymore. What kind of return can beat Primo? My man is looking sick, slick, litty. I mean, let's be honest, people. Nobody has the amount of swag that Primo has. Welcome everybody to a brand new episode of Greatness of Smackdowns. Not a very good show if I'm being honest, I expected a little bit more, like I've said that so many times before, I have an issue with Smackdown, I have a big issue with Smackdown. The issue is, the main rivalry is not the WWE Universal title rivalry, it's the Roman Reigns rivalry, the rivalry that is the worst rivalry of the show. I honestly care about Otis smashing more than I care about Roman Reigns vs King Corbin. And as a matter of fact, I would love to see footage of Otis smashing. He deserves it. That should be the payoff. We've been watching the storyline for the past two months. I wanna see the payoff. I wanna see the smash. Anyway people, the show kicks off with Kane. What? Yeah, Kane is back. Uh, that was random. Anyway. Yeah, we got Kane, and honestly, I miss the guy. I know people hate Big Show and Kane, and we got two of these returns, so I'm pretty sure most of the YouTubers are very, very angry right now, but I love these two, very underappreciated, very underrated by the fans, so I'm glad they're back. And look, they didn't save it for the Royal Rumble, so maybe there are bigger surprises. For some reason, he's talking like The Undertaker, even more right now, we're just 9 days away from his favorite night of the year. He's talking about his Royal Rumble match elimination record, and I think he just entered the Royal Rumble, I'm not quite sure. He got interrupted by Bray Wyatt, and Bray Wyatt just reminded us that The Fiend actually attacked Kane on Raw. And by the way, Bray Wyatt actually debuted by attacking Kane. This was kinda random, I don't really understand why they decided to do it, but that was kinda explained since we got The Fiend, but Kane said, what took you so long? And he didn't say that to Bray Wyatt, he actually said that to Daniel Bryan. We got Daniel Bryan's running knee, and it seems like Team Hell No just gave us some Teamwork. Daniel Bryan even got the Fiend's dreadlocks. Yeah, that's pretty normal. Yeah, that was actually pretty cool, but where does Kane stand in this storyline right now? We all know that we are getting a one-on-one -on -one match, uh, Bray Wyatt versus Daniel Bryan for the WWE Universal title at the Royal Rumble. Is Kane going to be a manager? Will Kane help Daniel Bryan? One thing's for sure, I'm glad that we finally got Pyro. Kane's entrance without the pyro is the most ridiculous thing that WWE ever did. Daniel Bryan says that a lot of people think that The Fiend is good at mind games, but he's good at running away. And he basically says that he's got an idea. Not a good idea, not a smart idea, but basically it's going to be a strap match. Okay, so maybe it makes sense, I guess, kind of. It's stupid in Gayfay, but whatever. Name me... One good strap match in the WWE history. One good strap match, give me one. Exactly, it's kind of worrying. Then we got Big E versus John Morrison, and I'm very glad that John Morrison's slow-mo is finally back. The man even dyed his hair. This was pretty cool, man. I love watching John Morrison in the ring. Nobody has the same style. He has this weird parkour style of wrestling and I absolutely appreciate that we even got his signature move that at one point I think was his finisher and the, the Starship Pain looked absolutely amazing man, like the way he did it, I don't remember him doing it like that, just you know with only his legs, but the only thing that lacked was the impact, we didn't get a lot of impact in that move, but man. I loved it. That was honestly for me the highlight of the show, watching John Morrison back in the ring and he won the match. Maybe not the best way to return the guy, you know, give, giving us Big E versus John Morrison, really. Nothing against Big E, he is amazing, definitely a potential future WWE World Champion. All I'm saying is it's random, a bit too random. 
Now, I see something... I see a lot of potential in The Miz and John Morrison. If you guys don't remember, in Kayfabe, the reason why John Morrison left the WWE was because The Miz attacked him and gave him a skull-crushing finale on the ramp, if I, I, if I remember that correctly. So, why would John Morrison want to help The Miz? So, I feel like in a few months or after a, a year or something, John Morrison will turn on The Miz, and one of them is going to be a babyface. And then we will get an explanation and a reminder that John Morrison left the WWE because of The Miz. But of course, that would be WWE being smart. They probably won't even acknowledge that. We got The Usos vs The Revival, in which obviously The Usos won the match. Nothing really special right here. In my opinion, WWE drafted The Usos back to SmackDown way too soon. They were on Raw for like a couple of months, and they brought them back to SmackDown. And in my opinion, they've been doing so much stuff on SmackDown for the last 3 or 4 years, that there's nothing left to accomplish for them. Now, I don't remember whether they won the Raw Tag Team titles on Raw, but if they didn't, then why would you bring them back to SmackDown? We got a brawl between Lacey Evans and Sasha Banks, of course we got Bayley, and the announcers actually teased Sasha Banks possibly being injured. We got Bayley versus Lacey Evans instead. That was a pretty cool match, honestly I really liked it, especially because of the ending. That women's right looked absolutely amazing, possibly the only time I actually liked it. Lacey Evans wins against the WWE SmackDown Women's Champion, so basically we are getting Lacey versus Bayley at the Royal Rumble, and this is an unpopular opinion, but as a huge Lacey Evans fan, I feel like she should win the title. Bailey as a champion is not the worst thing that happened, but I don't know, I just don't care. Maybe, maybe it's time. Sheamus is making fun of Shorty G's height. Now, Sheamus is a huge dude, but of course he's taller quite a bit, but is he really like that much taller? I don't get it. If he would make fun of someone like Rey Mysterio, Kalisto, maybe I would get it. Shorty G is a normal looking dude. I don't get... I, I really don't get it. And what's interesting is that Ali is actually even shorter, but nobody made a joke about how Ali is short, or even Rey Mysterio these days, nobody's making fun of that. Every single Shorty G rivalry is going to be the same. I've already seen it with Baron Corbin. Sheamus had so much potential, maybe he should have bent for the Intercontinental Championship or something like that. No, he's going to chase little guys, fella. But of course, Shorty G stood up for himself. We were supposed to get an Elias concert, but Sami Zayn, Cesaro and Shinsuke Nakamura interrupt. For no reason, honestly, they didn't even care about Elias. They talked about Braun Strowman instead. And basically, Elias disrespected them, so they attacked him. We got Braun Strowman saving him. That's one of the lowest points of SmackDown as well. This whole Sami, Shinsuke, Strowman thing, I, I really cannot stand it. And while Shinsuke Nakamura is the Intercontinental Champion, he's doing something, Cesaro is just there. We got Sonya Deville versus Alexa Bliss, and it seems like this rivalry is basically going to turn into Sonya Deville versus uh, Mandy Rose, because Mandy Rose is always focusing on Otis, and Sonya Deville is not very happy about it. This basically distracted Sonya Deville, so Alexa Bliss won the match, so it seems like Deville is not very happy about it. I only have one question. When is Bobby Lashley coming for Mandy Rose? That's the only question I have. Bobby, two wives. That's what I want to see. And of course, we got a tables match. Robert Roode versus Roman Reigns. Of course, like expected, we got a bunch of people interfering like the Uso Dolph Ziggler Bobby Roode. It wasn't a bad match. We actually got a few cool spots, but it ended with a spear through the table. Bobby versus Roman Reigns. Who could have thought that Roman Reigns is going to win that match. And that was basically your SmackDown. So, yeah. Like I've said before, this is my biggest issue with SmackDown. Every show ends the same way. And I've talked about that already, but Dolph Ziggler and Bobby Roode or Robert Roode, whatever, listening to Corbin is the most ridiculous thing I've seen in a while. Robert Roode is a veteran. Dolph Ziggler as well. These two are like future Hall of Famers, especially Dolph Ziggler. Uh, Rude was great in TNA. 
why would they listen to, well, compared to them, a rookie? It doesn't make any sense at all. It's like they gave up, they're only there for the money in kayfabe, and I, I just, I don't get it. It makes no sense whatsoever. But I would give this Magnum probably 5.5 out of 10, uh, mostly for Kane, uh, John Morrison. Other than that, a pretty boring show. So thank you for watching the video, let me know in the comments below what did you enjoy the most and give me your rating. Thank you for watching the video, peace, love and hugs, it's been a pleasure.